And now for the longest level in the game. And I'm talking about both acts here. Both of them took me like 10 minutes. Although this was mainly because for classic Sonic, I actually followed a red ring guide the whole time. And that's how I was able to get all of the red rings, which believe it or not, is worth it for this level. I hate those those pickaxe enemies. Like, in general, especially in the modern level, the pickaxe enemies that throw their pickaxes, they're really cheaply placed. They're the worst part of the level, aside from the fact that it drags out too long. Like, the biggest problem a lot of people have with Planet Wisp is that it drags on far too long. Although honestly, well, yes, it is the worst level in the game. But, honestly, I think that it's not nearly as bad as Sandopolis Zone, because Sandopolis Zone, it was bland. Whereas with this level, there's still good platforming, and there's still good speed. Like this. I don't see the point of the loop giving you a burst of speed just to drop you down to a platforming section like at Hilltop, but other than that... Like, I think the reason I had such an easy time with getting all the red rings was because of the bubble shield. That and the fact that I was following a guide. Yeah, it's kind of annoying how if you fall down there and you go too far to the right, then a wall stops you from backtracking and you get cheated out of a red ring. I was lucky I was able to make that spin dash jump. But yeah, they're basically trying to cram all six acts of Planet Wisp from Colors into one level. And that's why both of the acts take so long. Honestly, I couldn't imagine doing this without a guide. Because a few of the red rings are pretty annoying to get, and you'd have no idea how to get them without a guide. Like, with one, you have to spin dash down a slope with just the right momentum so that you get, so that you get over to a red ring. It's kind of hard to explain. The way the Spike Wisp works in this game, as opposed to in Colors, is that you can't spin dash again while in the middle of the spin dash. You have to wait until you jump off a wall or finish spin dashing first. It doesn't handle quite as well as it did in Colors. And because there's no Wisp meter, you have to rely on listening to the sound effects of the Wisp theme in order to tell when it's about to run out. And when it speeds up, that's telling you that's about to run out. I never really had a problem with it. Like, I was able to listen to the audio cues just fine. Like, I like the Spike Wisp, but like, I like how it lets you climb walls and... Well, is it climbing walls just a Knuckles thing, though? Like, that's that's another thing. Like, like the Rocket Wisp... Like, the, the Hover Wisp with tails, and this is Knuckles. Only better because you can climb ceilings too. And you can actually climb quickly because you can spin dash up them, like like with the Knuckles and Amy combination in Sonic Advance 3. So this is basically just uh, better Knuckles. Like if, if they have wall climbing programmed into the game, then I don't know why the person who made the real Knuckles mod couldn't have couldn't have put climbing in the game too. But yeah. This has a lot of reliance on the Spike Wisp, this level. Like, it's not like you're using all of the Wisps. Like, it makes sense for the Spike Wisp to be the one used because Classic Sonic does have a Spin Dash. Except Modern Sonic didn't have a Spin Dash in colors, so never mind. Like, it just feels more like a natural extension of his abilities, I guess, because he has a Spin Dash already. And see? A fast, thrilling section. This isn't bland like Sandopolis was. Like, there's plenty of good sections in this level. It's just that drags on. Basically, the gimmick of this level is that you have you have to spin dash on gears with the spike wisp, and you have to be holding the correct direction on them, or the gears won't move in the way you want. And like, there's especially this this one large amount of, of gears that you have to do everything right on in order to progress. Which can get annoying, since it's not always intuitive what direction you have to press on the gears. 
a lot of people have complained about this remix, and I don't really like it either, to be honest. It was mainly after I actually played the level. The whole techno instrument, it can get it can get kind of ear grating with the way the melody is and the way the instrumentation is. That red ring is really annoying to get if you don't know exactly what to do. But yeah, I definitely prefer the modern remix to this. Where it's basically the original theme, but less boring. I never really liked the Planet Wisp theme in general. Like, I don't know, I guess it's just... It's too relaxing. But not fast-paced enough. Not epic enough, I don't know. Of course, both of these levels are going to take a pretty long time. So it's a good thing that I have a whole bunch of trivia prepared, because... That actually gives me something to talk about. Tetsi Katano, who directed Black Knight and did work in the Adventure series, directed the 3DS edition of this game, with Sonic Team and Dimps developing it. Like, people might blame entirely on Dimps, how the 3DS version is not quite as good, but it was also Sonic Team working on it. It's just that the 3DS version had like 8 months of development. Which really sucks, because it could have been a perfect handheld representation game. But instead, they only put, like, Rush and the DS version of Colors as representatives. And, like, someone asked one of the, the Sega workers on Twitter if they're going to be referencing Game Gear games, which were a significant part of Sonic's history until Adventure came out. And he just was like, Game Gear games? LOL. Which is pretty disrespectful to all the people who defend the Ganger game. I know people just say that they're generic platformers, but they're still good platformers. Yeah, this is the really annoying section of the level. Again, it's not very intuitive where you're supposed to... Like, I guess you have to hold right here, because the gear is going to the right. And then it starts going in directions other than right, automatically. It's kind of easy to forget which gears you've already done stuff with. And so you'll just go on to the same gears over and over. The PC version of Generations, which I'm playing now, was outsourced to the UK company Devil's Details, which sucks because it means that you can't really ask Sonic Team for help when you have like technical issues or whatever. It just, it just directs you to Devil's Details instead. Like, we talked to Espio earlier, and, you know, it was rec it was only recently that I realized what the pun on his name was. I used to think it was just some random name. Espio? Espionage? He's a ninja? So that name actually makes sense. Never really knew that that was the source of his name. See, he gives you a thumbs up here. You can also get him to do the finger wag as one of the victory animations. But because he doesn't have a smirk, which was iconic of classic Sonic, it doesn't really have the same effect. Yes! This is the reward for getting all the red rings here. You unlock the homing attack, which requires all of your skill points at once to equip. It is worth it though because you lose the bubble shield if you get hit. I don't know why they called the aqua shield when it was never called that before. Like why? And like they also call it the the thunder shield even though it's always called the electric shield, but whatever. It's just annoying that you have to make an entirely new skill set just to equip the homing attack when Generation 3, yes, well it didn't have a skill system at all, but it had no problem with giving Classic Sonic a homie attack as a natural ability, like, like, halfway into it. Which is kind of annoying, to be honest, because that combined with a cutscene that comes after this, where Sonic does a homie attack in front of Classic Sonic, and Classic Sonic is like, Wow, you're awesome, modern Sonic. I'm so much weaker than you. Well, he doesn't say that, but he might as well have. Like, if they're going to raise a middle finger to the nostalgia blind classic fanboys and I'm all for it, but then don't go ahead and make him mute just to try to appease them. It just missing. 
It would have been much better if they used the golden shield from Sonic 3D Blast to give the homing attack, but whatever. I really love the way this looks. Imagine if the entirety of modern Planet Wisp was like this. We could have had Planet Wisp fully in 3D. And we could have had, like, a mechanical Planet Wisp for one act, and this for the other act. But instead we have to go to 2D and then eventually go into the mechanical part that looks boring and boring and dull. Like, I love the way this looks. I love the... I love the grass and the purple liquid. Like, this looks great and it... It's the only aesthetic that the... The music actually suits. But then they, then they just go into mechanical level and it looks boring. Yay, another awkward transition to 3D from 2D. I don't know why they have the Sonic Hero Seaside Hill cannons here. This level uses the Rocket Wisp in the most bland way imaginable. Because literally all you do is just... Is just go up. My game froze here the last time I tried to record this. And in fact, my entire computer froze. So naturally I was really panicking when I got here and I was desperate to try to go to a lower route to avoid it and died. I think it has to do with those those missiles. Maybe they were causing too much slowdown and strain? It doesn't help that's kind of hard to see the wall jumping tile because it's, it's on a shadowed wall and the wall's already dark red to begin with. So I don't know why they thought that was a good idea. Like, I don't know why they firmly established that only certain walls can be wall jumped on now. And of course, you have to make use of the annoying slide move that sucks, because it only serves to nerf the stomp. Because you can do it by accident. Honestly, I would be happy if the... If the slide didn't even exist. I'd be happy if, instead of the slide, we had the spin dash instead. That way we'd be able to have the spin dash jump in 3D back, which would be fantastic and was one of the reasons why I liked the Adventure Sonic gameplay to begin with. But we'd also get to have all the modern Sonic abilities that we get the benefit from. The financial report confirmed that Sonic Generations would be on the PC and 3DS, but then it was disconfirmed in an update to said paper. Only for the 3DS version to be reconfirmed later, and the PC version much later. The Xbox 360 avatar parts are patterned after classic Eggman, which kind of spoiled the big plot twist at the end. Not that it was really that big of a twist, I mean, pretty much everyone guessed that they were going to have classic Eggman show up. So it was not really that big of a surprise. I don't really care about spoiling this story. The only thing I cared about was spoiling the levels. Because all I care about was the gameplay anyways. Sonic Generation's first demo was made available on June 23rd, 2011. Which is appropriate because it's exactly 20 years after the first Sonic game was released. The second demo was released on October 19th, 2011. When Generations was one of the daily deals for the Steam 2012 Summer Sale, it was actually discounted to $10.19. Which is weird. I actually got this game for 8 bucks because I heard that there was a Sonic sale, and so I decided, why not buy it right now? That card is pretty annoying because it turns out, you can boost on it. How was I supposed to know that? Like, Sonic was crouching on it, automatically. How was I supposed to know that pressing the boost button would send me flying off into my deck? Like, that's, that's confusing and inconsistent. Something I like is that you can actually jump through these platforms now. Because something I really hated about Colors was that you couldn't jump through those green line platforms. But here, you can even rocket through them. I remember at one point I was really lucky that I was able to rocket through an area because I was a little bit too far to the right. But the game thankfully had mercy and allowed me to continue. Another thing merciful is that there's actually a lower route here rather than sending into a pit if you don't land on the cart. But yeah, I don't really see the point of 
having this cart section to begin with is like it's just you sitting there doing nothing. It's especially annoying if you have no way of knowing that you can that you can boost it at all. Like, almost how tells you in the loading screen, but that's a random hint. I don't think that hint should be random if it's so unintuitive. Like he should like he should tell you it no matter what. So Act Generation's massive collection edition set is exclusive to to Europe and Australia for some reason. And it was later revealed Japan was getting an exclusive special 20th anniversary set as well. America, with the biggest group of Sonic fans in the fan base, was cluelessly forgotten. That doesn't really make any sense to me. That's, that's the biggest example of how missamed Sega is with appealing to their fan base, because their biggest fan base is Americans, and the franchise was meant to appeal to Americans to begin with, and yet they exclude America. It doesn't really make any sense. There are trails of rings here to tell you when you should when you should go up. So that's good. Like it's good game design to have trails of rings like that. In the French version of the game, all of the voice actors from the French dub of Sonic X reprise their roles. Except for that vector. Which is kinda a weird exclusion. I don't know, maybe maybe he's not around anymore or something. They since continued in subsequent games. Wish we got that treatment. I don't know why it was the French version specifically. I know that the voice actor for Sonic in Japan has never actually changed. Like, it's always been the same guy. I've heard the voice actor, and what's interesting is that he sounds like the Sonic OVA voice. He likes to use a lot of bad English as well, which makes sense, because English is cool in Japan, it's supposed to appeal to America. See what I mean? This is basically just them saying, look at how much cooler modern Sonic is than classic Sonic. Which is good, but also kind of misses the point of having classic Sonic mute in the first place. Charmy's being annoying as usual. And he doesn't even say anything to him. He doesn't say anything to anyone. Very scary, but being with you makes it all better. Yeah. Hey, you look different. He's made an idiot of once again. Classic Sonic isn't nearly as annoyed by him because oh, hey. he's closer to his age, I guess. Which makes sense. And now we've got the hardest missions in the game unlocked. The missions for the last Sonic. three zones are the hardest ones in the game. Sonic. And it makes sense because this game basically degrades in quality the further you go oh, into hey. it. Like, the level design gets more and more annoying the more you progress. So it makes sense that the last missions are the hardest.